So let's get started. And before we get into talking about the specifics of maintenance in the bucket elevator, there's something that I'd like you to think about. And that is that back in my early days, when I first got started in this industry, I had gotten a lot of my training from Clayton Ellsworth at EBM Corporations in Norfolk, Nebraska. And Clayton always told us to pretend that you're the product going through the bucket elevator or going through the spouting or going, going through the transfer conveyor. If you think about yourself as being the product going through all of this equipment, you're going to have a better idea of what might need to be done to handle that product better so that it comes out on the other end in better condition. Well, in the situation now, what I'd like you to do is consider that you are the equipment that is handling that product, that you are the bucket elevator and you are the components and you want to make sure that you understand the most about those components because that's going to allow you to understand better how to maintain them. Okay, so if we're going to maintain those components properly, let's look at one of the primary ones in the bucket elevator and that of course is the belt. If you don't have the belt, then there's no way to get those buckets to move from the boot to the head to be able to discharge your product. And you have to have the right belt for your application. You want to make sure that it's uh, going to meet all the qualifications and basically in a grain and feed application what you want is a static conductive, oil resistant and flame retardant belt to make sure that it's going to be working properly and, and accomplish all the things it needs to. When, when you think about that and you say, well, what kind of belt is going to accomplish those things? First of all, there's a couple of options. You've got PVC belt. And what I mean by that, it's polyvinyl chloride. It's got a woven fabric carcass in the middle, and it's usually just one ply. A PVC belt is going to be one ply with the covers on the outside. It doesn't matter how thick the belt is, it's just going to have one ply of carcass with the covers on the outside. Nice thing about PVC, since it only has one ply in the middle, it can go around smaller pulleys. Whether you're starting out like a PVC uh, 200 belt, uh, you can go up to 350, 450, whatever the case might be, it's going to be able to bend more easily and go around a smaller pulley. A PVC belt has a moderate oil resistance to it, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. The other option would be a rubber belt, which has multiple plies. This one is a three-ply 330 belt, similar in the ability as far as the pounds per inch width as that PVC belt, but it has three layers of cords in it rather than just one, and then multiple layers of rubber. And the rubber belt can have different amounts of uh, oil resistance. It could have uh, moderate oil resistance or superior oil resistance, which is going to be very important if you're handling um, any type of fat content in your feed products. Now, when I was mentioning before that you need a static conductive belt, what I mean is that as the bucket elevator is running, it's building up static. That's just a normal consequence of the product moving around, the bucket's moving around. You have to way of, have a way of discharging that static. So you want the belt to be static conductive so the, the static goes into it, it comes up. Your lagging should be static conductive also. It goes into the framework of the bucket elevator and the bucket elevator should be grounded properly in order to make sure that that static is dissipated. You don't get a spark inside of the bucket elevator. The other thing is that it should be uh, flame retardant. Uh, you don't want the, the rubber to start increasing the fire inside of a bucket elevator if a fire were to start. Now, if I think back in the old days, back when I was on the farm and we were going to have a bonfire and burn up old brush and things that have accumulated, my dad would often throw on a tire and it helped burn it and it burn really hot and it'd make a lot of black smoke. We don't want to do that anymore. But the idea was that that rubber would actually make it burn hotter and faster. Well, we don't want that to happen in your bucket elevator. You want a flame retardant belt in there. And of course, the oil resistance that I mentioned before, um, a PVC belt has a moderate oil resistance. If you don't have enough oil resistance in a feed application when you're adding fat, the product particles might start coming off a PVC belt and on a rubber belt it might actually start coming off and you might start losing some of the uh, outside layers of the belt. So you need a superior oil resistant belt. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to uh, belt wear. Now the other thing is that with the belt you want to have good traction. You want to make sure that it's uh, spinning the way it's supposed to. And so, first of all, you've got take-ups in the boot. You can tension the belt down there, but you also need to have good lagging on the head pulley. When I'm talking about lagging, normally we'd be talking about um, slide lag, which this is. This is easy lag slide lag, meaning that you can take it and you can bend it so that it'll fit around even a small pulley like this one, or it'll go around a much larger pulley, and it uh, fits on really well then. And the idea is that you can slide the pieces in or slide them out when it comes time to re re um, replace them. But Good slide lag has good traction. It's like a tire that you want to have if you're going through snow or ice or mud. You want to have good traction. The same idea is 
when you've got that belt running here, you want good traction on your head pulley to make sure that it's pulling that belt around and it's not slipping at all. So all those things are really important. Let's take a look at a few photos here to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. First of all, I want to say thank you to Chief Industries, which allowed us to come into their dealer days last year. And so I've got a few photos here. Otherwise, you'd think, how is it even possible to have a head section looking this clean? Well, the first one shows the head section in the warehouse. And if you look at it closely, you can see that there's a little door just underneath where the head pulley would be and underneath the bearing. That little door allows you to look up underneath and see how good the lagging is. You can't see it from the top. All you'd be able to see would be the edges. So you have to be able to look up underneath. And of course, in these photos here, you can see that you're looking up underneath. You can see that the lagging is brand new. It's in good condition. You can see the retainers. You can see where they come around. You've got the single retainers where they come around all the way and they meet in the middle again. But um, that's the main point. You, you, you need an opening down there so that you can see the lagging. An opening at the top just isn't going to give you a good enough view. Now, I got called out. Uh, to go look at a bucket elevator last year and uh, the customer was saying we don't understand what's going on we just put on a new belt brand new HD max buckets and we burned through the belt right away we don't know what's going on so I came out there and take, took a look at it and that's where this next photo comes from and you might look up in there and you say well it's pretty easy to see what's going on the retainers are still there but the lagging is completely missing and you wonder how could they not see this well the thing is give a little background this was a feed mill that there were new owners, new corporate owners took over. They hired a maintenance man, which is great. He was a very intelligent guy, but he came from a totally different industry. He had never seen a bucket elevator before he got there. And so he didn't know what he wasn't seeing. He had done everything he could to try to get this bucket elevator to work. Obviously, it wasn't going to when the lagging was completely missing. When I explained to him how it worked and how the slide lag goes in and out, and he said, well, does it come in little pieces like that just to fit the width of your pulley? And I said, well, no, it comes in six foot lengths. You have to cut it down to size. And he said, I think we have some of that in the maintenance shed. And sure enough, we went down there, as you can see, those are photos from the lagging that was right there in their maintenance shed. And so don't ever think that you just know for sure that everyone out there doing maintenance in your facility knows exactly what's going on. Feel free to give us a call at MaxiLift. We will be glad to help you out, maybe help you in situations like this where it's an easy fix. But uh, fortunately, they had the lagging they needed. He was able to get that installed and the bucket elevator was running much better after that. Now, the other aspect of being able to get that belt to run properly isn't just to have good lagging and good tension. You have to have a crown on the head pulley and the boot pulley to make sure that it's a little bit of an inc increase right in the middle of the pulleys and that allows the belt to track in the center. Normally that amount of crown is an eighth of an inch per 12 inches of face width. You can have a super crown, they call it, of a quarter of an inch for 12 inches of face width. The only problem you get into there is if you use that super crown and you've got just one wide bucket, like an 18 by eight or 20 by eight bucket, that means that every time it goes over those pulleys, it has to change in position like that and it can cause wear on the bucket. So sometimes that can be an issue. Normally we don't need a super crown on a pulley. Eighth of an inch per 12 inches of face width is normally plenty good. So that's, that's what you should go for. Now, once in a while, like you'll see in this other photo that I've got there, customer had a, a pulley that had no crown on it. That's not unusual. Pulley manufacturers don't know for sure where a pulley is gonna go when they make it. And so this one was made without a crown. You can put a crown on it, as you can see what they did is they took a strap of metal put it around the, outs or the outside edge of the circumference and welded it into place, they created a crown. And that will work. The only problem is it's going to wear out your belt right in the very middle uh, because that's where all of the wear is going to, going to happen. So what you want to do is just make sure that you get a crown pulley in the first place. Now, the next photo you're going to see there is going to show you a situation of what happens when the belt is not tracking in the middle. It's a sad situation, but a belt can come all the way over to the side, and in many cases, it's gonna rub on the side of the head bonnet, possibly on the boot. And in this case, you can see that it rubbed in numerous places. Possibly the belt was hitting the side and wore down to the point that it was gone. Then the buckets came over and started to wear on the side. It may be possible that the, that the pulley came over too. I can't really tell from this, and we didn't open it up to look inside. And uh, so that was quite a concern there, getting new lagging on that, making sure that the crown was there was gonna make a difference. And also you might take a look there at that and see that they were missing the belt guard. That's the bit dangerous situation. We'll talk about that later on also. So we've talked about some things there with the belt. Next, we're gonna move on to some of the specific characteristics you might see with belt wear, bucket wear, and some other things. So that'll be in the next section.